Oh look, it's a ChargePoint Express fast charger. I wonder what my options are. If I have a Nissan Leaf, I can use this. And if I have any other vehicle that's not a Tesla, I can use this. But uh, is this guy gonna even stick around? Let's talk about that. Welcome back to Out of Spec Guide, I'm Max, and today I am well, at a charge point station, but big news, if you haven't heard already, Rivian is the third automaker to announce a partnership with Tesla for charging. So in 2025, Rivians will have an NACS, North American Charging Standard, AKA Tesla's connector, in their cars natively, but starting in spring of next year, 2024, they'll have access to 12,000 superchargers, presumably the same superchargers that Ford and General Motors will also have access to. This is big news and I could make a video all about just that, we're covering the same ground we have. I made a video on the General Motors situation with my girlfriend Gosha, you can watch on this channel, also one about Ford, uh, but I don't want to repeat the info there. I want to make this video more as a kind of uh, don't panic situation for the many of you who have CCS cars, myself included, because the combined charging system, CCS system, uh, in lots of cars, while maybe not perfect, uh, it's here to stay for better or worse, and it's actually gonna interoperate with the Tesla standard. So this is me to explain how that's gonna work with all the nerdy details. Pardon if this video doesn't have perfect acoustics I'm in the parking garage because today is like 95 degrees and these fast chargers are inside nice and cooled. Um, so let's talk about what this all entails. So right, different ports, different connectors, everyone's excited thinking, oh, uh, aside from superchargers, other manufacturers are gonna be able to use the Tesla uh, connector. They're gonna be able to make their own cables with it. We've already seen announcements to that effect. ABB, uh, all kinds of companies have already announced that they're gonna be moving towards this direction, providing hardware um, for Tesla. However, CCS isn't going away, and that's uh, for several reasons. So the first of all is the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure uh, Act, or it's a NEVI, basically, as it's called. It's part of the Inflation Reduction Act, I believe, but basically it allocates a lot of money towards uh, charging. Uh, money towards charging specifically uh, towards CCS of that variety that's gonna be accessible to all kinds of vehicles. And it still hasn't changed this language. When they say CCS, what they mean is this connector that basically every vehicle for fast charging uses on the market right now that's not a Tesla. We have to remember, even though Ford and General Motors have made this announcement, their vehicles aren't gonna have the Tesla connector natively until 2025. Um, so that leaves a lot of production. Lot, they're not gonna obsolete their own vehicles and there are so many cars out there already with CCS. Um, so the funding for CCS chargers is still gonna go through and even Tesla is eligible for that funding if they add the CCS adapters to the superchargers, which I think they're gonna to have to do to make them compatible with Ford, GM, Rivian, and we'll see maybe more EVs uh, to come in the next year. And they're gonna to have to do something like that. There already are 11 Tesla superchargers using an adapter solution in the US, but that's a very limited rollout. This is much more expansive, so I'm not exactly sure how it's gonna look. I don't think it's gonna look like them adding an adapter to every one of those superchargers. It may just be that Ford and GM customers can buy an adapter or maybe get an adapter for free, Rivian too, um, get an adapter for their CCS vehicle that will go into that new Tesla connector uh, and that's only gonna work on their vehicles. Eventually, I hope that adapter becomes generic once every major automaker announces a partnership with Tesla. Who's left to go? Well, we have Stellantis, who owns a lot of brands, including you know Jeep in America, that's a pretty important one. Uh, then we have also Dodge, Chrysler, all that. Uh, we have Volvo to go, uh, which also includes Polestar. Uh, then of course the Germans, Volkswagen, Mercedes-Benz, BMW. Heard nothing from them yet, not a peep. The Koreans, Hyundai. Um, no word, they are apparently evaluating it, so is Stellantis. So it looks like the momentum is headed Tesla's way. However, there's still gonna have to be compatibility because there's all these vehicles already being produced with CCS. The second big reason not to freak out if you have a CCS car that you're gonna have an obsolete car is that, well, Tesla's actually speak the language of CCS as of about 2021. All Model 3s, Model Ys, I think also Model S and X, have compatibility with an adapter. Tesla sells on their own website to charge at stations like these with a CCS connector. So it lets you DC fast charge a Tesla um, that way. 
which you know, this upcoming adapter for Ford and GM will just be the other way around. The fact that they can do this means that Teslas actually have a control unit, a chip in them that translates the um, Tesla communication, which is proprietary, towards uh, CCS, which is the open standard everyone else uses. So the North American charging standard as a connector is really a physical difference in connector. The actual communication protocol is likely going to be the same for interoperability between vehicles. I think that's a good thing. And Charin, the group that is, uh, you know, kind of uh, had a lot to do with the development and adoption of CCS, has finally relented and said, okay, we're going to look towards open sourcing the North American charging standard. Tesla says it's open source, but regardless, I think a consortium has to look at it, evaluate it independently to make every other automaker comfortable with it, which is perfectly reasonable. You can't stake your company on one other company potentially being able to sue you for using their connector and port. So by all means, if Tesla really wants this connector to be a standard, it's going to be opened up. So that's going to happen. But as it happens, it's going to happen on the backbone of the CCS protocol. So that sounds nerdy or confusing, right? It's not going to be this connector, but it's going to be that protocol. And I have bad news. It's likely also going to be these uh, cables and stuff. And, you know, different CCS cables, different charging hardware has different levels of reliability and usability. But I found, for instance, the, I think, Huber & Schuber um, cables electrify America. Some of the cables ChargePoint uses, I don't know all their suppliers, but a lot of these CCS cables to deliver, you know, direct current charging at high amperage, high amperage and also high voltage, uh, they need thick liquid cooled cables. Tesla has gone for more simpler engineering solutions that work for them, resulting in slimmer, elegant cables. It has nothing to do with the connector. So while the connector will change, the rest of the charging hardware, the software you use, be it a charge point, Electrify America, Blink Charger, EVgo, wherever it may be, that charger is going to be the same for better or worse um, for the rest of that experience. It includes payment too. When you plug your car in, you're not going to, you know, even if you have a Ford or GM car, I don't think immediately you'll have the magical experience of Tesla backend communication. I think there's going to be some activation through the app. That's already how it works at the existing Tesla adapters, um, right? The existing supercharger sites in the US that have those CCS adapters. Um, you have to activate through the Tesla app the same way with these charge point units, you'd activate through their app or at Electrify America with their app. I think. For better or worse, that's the landscape we're looking at. So don't expect the Tesla news, whether you're getting a vehicle with Tesla NACS, the new connector or not, to change much. And of course, if you're watching this video now, you, you can't even buy one of these vehicles. 2025 is when it's going to begin. So interoperability is a must. It's a standard. And uh, the Teslas of the last few years, the Model 3s, Ys, S, and Xs, have all had the compatibility with CCS by being able to use Tesla's own adapter. So they have to speak CCS in any ways. So Tesla's gotten their back end more interoperable. Other automakers, by working on Tesla, are making that reciprocal. So I think we're at the beginning of a good relationship here. Now, there are some worries here. A lot of people are worried about the potential monopoly Tesla can have about superchargers. I hope everything I've explained clears that up in the sense that while supercharger compatibility is going to be a big deal because that's the best charging network in the US currently, I don't think we should depend on superchargers and we shouldn't even expect them to be the only charging network. Yes, it's the most built out, the most reliable by far in the US, and they're making investments all the time to make it even bigger. However, even still, Tesla alone is not going to meet all of the charging demand. We need more, more, more DC fast charging hardware, be it funded through initiatives like the National, National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure uh, Bill or other things. We need uh, lots of money going into installing lots of new chargers. Some of those will be Tesla, some of them won't be, and they're all going to be interoperable. Some of them will have a Tesla NACS connector. Some of them will have CCS. Hopefully they'll have both because those will be the most common. Of course, there's Chadmo for you. Leave people watching this video who haven't gotten too mad at me yet. Yes, I know Chadmo exists. This is an obsolete standard in the US. Um, future iterations of this actually are still going to be popular in Asia and other markets, but in the US, as far as I'm concerned, this is a dead connector. Um, it's not worth talking about. However, CCS, right, this, it's still going to be with us for better or worse. So buckle up, get ready for that, and rejoice if you still have a CCS car. You're still going to have to use these cables, these connectors, everything, but you're not going to be left out on the cold and with an adapter then hopefully everyone will be able to buy within the next few years you're going to be able to join the nacs club for all of the tesla superchargers and third-party chargers that we're going to doubtless see that will incorporate tesla standard hopefully this video cleared those up is a little bit off the cuff a little bit ranty but i just wanted to basically 
calm everyone down. There's so much excitement right now, so much uncertainty. Don't freak out. If you're buying a CCS vehicle, whether it's a Rivian, Ford, or GM, or any other car now, Polestar, Volvo, um, Toyota BZ4X, Subaru Solterra, um, you're gonna be taken care of, you're gonna be fine. CCS is still a standard. Charin still stands by it. I know the CCS One connector, the one that I just showed you, is not perfect, but it doesn't matter. It's still gonna be a relevant thing for years to come. Your vehicle's not gonna become obsolete. And signs have shown that more and more interoperability is coming between Tesla, CCS, vice versa. So that's great. I'm Max with that a spec guide, and I'll see you in the next video.